so this is your last part for your co number one and the last topic remaining is brazing salting and adhesive bonding and these uh, kinds of uh, joining process lie in the spectrum of joining process and brazing and salting lie between fusion welding and solid state welding because neither we are melting the base material or nor we are just producing plastic deformation to join the material so it is basically uh, in between uh, fusion welding and solid state welding so let's move to uh, the types of permanent joints in brazing soldering and adhesive bonding so brazing basically introduces a brace metal uh, soldering introduces a solder metal and adhesion uh, bonding basically introduces a glue or something like a polymeric material brazing and soldering are attractive compared to welding under the circumstances uh, where the metals have poor weldability so when you have got a material which has poor weldability then we will do brazing soldering or adhesive bonding when dissimilar materials are required to be joined then also brazing and soldering are very uh, important and if uh, let's say the intensity of heat is going to destroy or damage the parts which are going to be joined then also these uh, types of techniques are very useful if the geometry is very complex let's say if we want to join internal surfaces internal components then as well and when high strength is not a requirement then also in many cases then adhesive bonding is employed so we will go to the next slide which is uh, brazing process so brazing and soldering process basically both are classified by american society american welding society is liquid solid phase bonding process liquid means that the filler material is melted solid means that the base metal or the materials are not melted and the phase is basically the temperature at which the bonding takes place so the bonding between the base material and the film material is a metallurgical bond because no melting or alloying of the base metals occurs. So in the brazing process basically we are going to melt the filler material and then the base material is not going to be felted and then this filler material is basically going to create a joint between those two parts which are required to be joined. So for starting with the brazing process, uh, we will first look at the fundamentals, then we will work on the types of brazing, uh, what are the filler types, what are the properties, what is the function of flux, what are the important parameters uh, employed in a brazing process, what is the brace morphology and what is the brain, brace joint design. So uh, this is basically uh, uh, this basically is uh, a brace joint you've got two parts and then they, you, you've got a filler material in between and uh, if you're going to zoom this under scanning or transmission electron microscopy you're going to get this image this is basically uh, the base material and then this is this basically a filler material so so I have put some research link for you guys so that you guys can uh, so that you can guess, can go and look at these interesting results that how different types of uh, dissimilar materials are basically joined using the brazing process. So what is brazing? Uh, brazing is basically a joining process in which a filler metal is placed between the fang surfaces. So basically if I want to join these two materials then what I am going to do is I am going to place some kind of filler material between the fang surfaces and then the temperature is going to be raised so either i am going to use induction heating or maybe i am going to apply some laser heating or i can apply a torch or some kind of stuff to heat this filler material and once sufficient uh, amount of temperature is raised then the melt it is going to melt the filler material but not the base material so it is not going to melt the base material but it is only going to melt the filler material so upon cooling uh, when the filler material is going to cool down uh, and then it is going to solidify and then a strong joint is basically obtained and this filler material goes into these surfaces or these small parts or sorry these uh, small uh, uh, let's say spaces through capillary reaction so capillary reaction is basically the process by which this filler material is basically absorbed or basically it is transported inside these small spaces and this uh, mechanism is very important in brazing process 
so in uh, brazing process uh, basically the temperature of melting of the filler material should be more than 450 degree centigrade if it is less than 450 degree centigrade then it will be classified as a soldering process uh, that is why materials which have high melting points such as silver aluminum copper cobalt and nickel based alloys are used and these alloys basically gives us uh, very strong joints so in typical brazing operation basically a filler material is placed along the periphery okay and uh, as shown in this figure and then heat is applied to the interface by external means the melting of the braze metal by capillary action and by capillary action it is basically filled in the closely fitting spaces and a joint is created so why do we apply brazing process basically it has many advantages such as it is a uh, very fast and rapid process it can basically uh, join very intricate and very light shaped uh, things and it can basically do joining with a very less amount of distortion so these are some of the advantages of uh, brazing process i'm going to attach uh, fundamentals to brazing uh, video so that you guys can go and look at it so it will be uploaded separately so some of the another advantages if you want to see diagrammatically are that we can basically join dissimilar materials and then we can join material which have very small spaces or even we can join material which have got a larger spaces as well so processes with varying thicknesses can also be joined and then we can also uh, join materials that we want to join temporarily let's say i want to join two uh, pipes then i can i'll fill the filler material and if i want to remove these or disassemble these pipes then i will again melt this filler material to remove it out and disassemble the parts so we have got this option of disassembly as well because it is not exactly a permanent joint and fourth and lastly we can basically join very permanent uh, complex shapes and we can just put this directly in a furnace uh, pre-assembled structure and then uh, the furnace is going to heat the filler material and then a joint will be created so there are some very good advantages of this brazing process how brazing process occurs uh, how the heat is supplied so basically you've got torch brazing you can use acetylene uh, heat sources you can use induction brazing sources you can use furnaces you can use vacuum furnaces so there are many various ways by which you can apply heat to melt the filler material you can use dip brazing infrared brazing there are many many types of brazing processes uh, that can be done uh, but one of the most important thing in terms of the brazing process is the selection of the filler material selection of the filler material is very important because basically uh, you need to ensure that you have grain boundary penetration so basically you the filler material is going to penetrate some a little bit or some part of it onto the surface of the base metal okay then uh, f the formation the selection of filler material is important that uh, the formation of intermetal intermetallic compounds might occur so what happens is that you need to select those filler materials you need to select those filler materials which have less tendency to form intermetallic compounds why intermetallic compounds are very brittle they are basically in between metals and in between non-metals so it is basically a compound which is very brittle it has got very high hardness but it is very brittle and it is easy to break so so the selection of uh, filler material affects the formation of intermetallic compounds as well and then lastly uh, if you select a very wrong filler material then it can cause galvanic corrosion at the joint and once the corrosion occurs then the filler will degrade and once the filler degrades then the joint will be uh, unjoined so the criteria for selecting the filler material is that we need to see which materials we want to join so we have got some material compatibility charts so using those material compatibility charts we know that okay which filler material is suitable for which kind of uh, materials to be joined then what kind of strength is required so different filler materials have different type of strength then we need to do the weather we, we need to ensure that whether we can go beyond 570 degree centigrade or what is our maximum temperature limit so if i am going to use uh, want to join aluminium then i cannot use 12000 degree uh, 1200 degree centigrade because it will melt the base material as well so it is very important to basically uh, use filler material based on our application based on our our uh, brazing temperature etc so these are some of the criteria which are very important for the selection of brazing process 
so uh, as i said that uh, the selection is very important and uh, uh, we discussed the, that we have got nickel cobalt silver gold aluminum and copper alloys and each of these uh, alloy filler material have their own melting temperature then they can be used for different applications then different types of brazing methods such as torch brazing or uh, element induction brazing or resistance brazing can be used so each material can be brazed by several ways some materials cannot be brazed so easily some materials can be brazed very easily and then one very very important thing is that whether the how much should be the gap whether wide gap capability is available for this material or not so the material gap capability is also very important because the control of the clearance between two joint is very important for the strength the cost and designation etc uh, not the designation but the cost is also quite important in the selection so it is for you guys to do some self learning on uh, this table so using this table you can basically answer these questions then if brazing is basically available in different forms as well such as pre-placed uh, shapes i can pre-place this shape between two parts and then melt this part so that it basically acquires the same shape of the joint that i want to join then i have the option to get some of uh, flux material in terms of mixtures uh, like say uh, you can get mixtures in terms of powders you can get mixtures in terms of paste then some brazing tapes are available as well so we have got flexibility in terms of basically how we apply the filler material uh, as we said earlier uh, it is very important to check the compatibility of the filler material so let's say if i want to join titanium alloys then for titanium alloys only one two and three types of filler materials can be used which types for titanium alloys i can use aluminium based I can use silver based and I can use titanium based. So uh, each material can be joined using different types of filler materials and uh, not every material is compatible. So let's say for example aluminium is compatible with only aluminium based filler material. Not a single another kind of filler uh, alloy can be used. So these are material compatibility charts which help us to select filler material correctly. So you after uh, observing this chart you guys should be able to answer these questions <clears throat> now that we have learnt about uh, brazing filler material we move on to the flux material basically it is very important for the braze material to be clean from rust from contaminant etc so for enhancing the uh, spreadability of filler or for enhancing uh, the spreadability of filler it is important to put flux material so flux is basically added in 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 the filler material and once the joining process starts basically the flux basically aids in basically the transport of fl uh, filler material as well and then uh, once uh, the brazing process is done what we do is basically we can either wash this flux material out or we can just uh, remove it separately so there are different types of flux available and uh, once again i will mention that one of the important uh, stuff for flux is to improve the wetting wetting can be improved uh, and what is wetting we will learn in the next slide <clears throat> so once we know that we we are aware of the filler material and the, and the flux material now we move on to what are the important properties we discussed earlier that capillary action is very important because through how the filler material is basically transported into the joint basically it is transported into the joint by capillary action it is basically capillary action is basically the ability of the metal in liquid state to pull its mass along the solid contact surface so the clearance between these two surfaces is going to basically pull this filler material inside and this basically permits once this material is pulled and then a joint is created it is only by this process by this capillary action that the filler material produces a good joint so the force by which the filler material goes inside is basically the capillary action or capillary force and it can be basically simply seen by observing uh, a very small tube inside a water you can see that uh, once we put a small tube inside a well of water then the water basically raises directly itself so this uh, simple uh, phenomena of capillary action helps us get a very good joint so i've got one video for capillary action and you guys can see and observe that later on 
Uh, it will be attached as a part of your slides. Another property which I discussed earlier is wettability. <coughs> wettability is basically once you apply a filler material on the surface, how much amount of it basically wets the surface? How much is the amount of it uh, which is going to basically create a joint? So if the wettability of a filler material is very small, uh, then what you see is that we have got a very large amount of surface. So uh, basically, uh, sorry to say that, if the wettability is very high, it means that the contact angle is very low. So contact angle and wettability are inversely proportional here. So if the contact angle is less than 90, then you can see that there is a lot of spreading. And once the approach, there is a lot of spreading, then we usually say that it is a very, a lot of, it is very good wettability material. Uh, if we move to next uh, part, we see that the wettability is getting uh, smaller, which means that the contact angle is increasing. So the contact angle is basically the angle between this line, the base plate, and the tangent of this fluid. So this is very, very important. So if this tangent uh, basically increases and gets more than 90 degrees, then there is not a lot of filler material which joins the base plate. So the wettability decreases. Once the wettability, wettability decreases, then the good joint is not created. The same can be seen in terms of the pressure difference. <clears throat> basically what happens is that, uh, as an example, if you put uh, water between two glass, okay, then you will observe that it is very difficult to separate those thin plates of glass. The same thing happens when we put a tempered glass on your phone. The, there is basically some fluid between your tempered glass. So the pressure basically difference basically holds that tempered glass onto your mobile phones. So the pressure difference basically depends a lot on the distance between these two blades. So the lesser is the difference the distance, then the more is the strength. It also depends, the pressure delta P also depends on the surface tension of the fluid as well and it depends on the wettability of the fluid as well. So wettability altogether as well as capillary action are two very important parameters for the joint strength. <clears throat> so what are the parameters for uh, joint strength? Uh, as we saw earlier, the joint design uh, joints are basically designed in the brazing operation using the clearance. So the clearance between these two parts is a very very important factor. If the clearance is too small, then the molten brazed metal will not fully penetrate at the interface. And if it is too large, then there will be insufficient capillary reaction for the molten metal to fill the interface. So let's see how uh, the joint strength affects the brazeability. The strength of the braze joint basically depends on the joint clearance. So as the clearance increases, the clearance increases it means that the gap increases once the gap increases then the capillary action decreases when the capillary action decreases then the strength also decreases so the lesser is the joint clearance then the more is the shear strength uh, for the joint and as we move uh, toward lesser uh, the joint clearance then the tensile strength also increases until a point where then it decreases. So we need to find an optimum ratio between good tensile strength and good shear strength by designing our joint with very good clearance. Another factor is basically contact area. So the more is the contact area, so stress is, the, is basically force per unit area. So the more is the uh, contact area, the more basically good is the resistance uh, of the body to uh, resist stress. So if, if you've got two examples uh, here, one is a good example and one is a poor example of the joint. So here in this case, you can see that the base plate has more area and hence the filler material has also more area. So it will take more amount of force to break this joint than this joint because this for this joint, the area is smaller. So when the area is smaller, then <coughs> uh, a larger amount of stresses will be uh, generated. If you look at this example, this example shows that uh, if you, in order to get a good joint, you need to have some fillets. If you have got fillets, then less stress concentration is generated. If you don't have fillet, then uh, the stress concentration is going to cause failure or fatigue failure to the joint. And this example is about T joint. So basically this is called a T joint. And what they've done is that here when there was a very small amount of area, they increased the area by increasing the uh, breadth of this or width of this T-joint. 
So these are some of the examples by which we can improve the bridging strength. Now there is one uh, more self-learning for you guys, for those, for guys who are interested in the search. <coughs> How does the filler material looks at in uh, scanning electron microscopy? So if you look at in a, a scanning electron microscopy, this is a schematic of this uh, scanning electron microscopy. If you look in, de in details, what happens is that the filler material is melted. When the filler material is melted, then what happens is that a reaction layer or a, a solid solution loop is generated. So you can see there is basically a small loop or a reaction layer is generated. This reaction layer is basically <coughs> what happens is that some amount, some amount of base material basically diffuses into the filler material and some amount of filler material diffuses into the base material. So what happens is that a reaction is created and a metallurgical bond is basically made. So a reaction happens and a metallurgical bond is created. So basically what is diffusion? Diffusion is basically an in alloy is basically a process of transfer of atoms uh, of different alloying components resulting in a change in chemical composition of the same of the alloy region so diffusion the material goes and it mixes and then a reaction happens what is this solid solution this solid solution is basically a mixture containing minor component some of the minor component of the filler material let's say uh, nickel or uh, tin or something which is uniformly distributed within the crystal lattice of the major component <coughs> so if you want to learn more about this then a research link is given for you guys to learn more about this and go in more details so this was all more or less all about uh, the brazing process and in the next uh, chapter we will go into the soldering process thank you for listening